Hey, good morning guys. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, just going to do a short little video today, uh, mostly on, I guess, the chipper and uh, awesome new pair of gloves I found. So some guys uh, are interested in the chipper and basically what's it take to get it connected to tractor. And so I'm just going to go through those steps, how I do it in um, kind of straightforward uh, video on that and then talk and show off uh, some new gloves that thinking maybe I'm not the only one that's in his 50s and hadn't figured out these awesome gloves. So check those out as well and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those later in the video. But let's get into hooking up this thing or at least how I All right, I realize it looks like I'm uh, going to perform a procedure and I kind of am. Um, nothing too serious. I like to put the gloves on and actually I just took a pair off because I just greased the machine. Uh, I always do that either when I put it away or when I load it. I should come down with a system and do it the same way every time, but how I do it, and I always take a look at it, see where it's at, make sure it's good and greased. So I've done that. There's um, grease fitting here, obviously on the uh, PTO shaft on both ends. I think there's two on this end where the shear pin is, and so, I don't like to get covered with grease right off the bat. So I went ahead and uh, greased uh, the PTO shaft, greased the machine. It's got two grease fittings on the top, which I think I've uh, talked about before, basically on either side of the, uh, the chipper uh, blade. And so those are greased. The other thing I typically do uh, when I bring it back into the shop is I'll open it up, clean off the blades and whatnot. And one of my viewers, and I mentioned this before, but one of my viewers recommended a good idea and it really has been uh, working well and that is after I get all the debris and little sticks that kind of stayed in there is to spray the blades down with WD-40. Uh, they're less sticky uh, with the uh, stuff that goes in. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I hook this up. I'm at a big advantage over some people because I'm able to store, at least currently, <laughs> store this chipper in the shop and I have it on a Harbor Freight dolly. And so I'm able to move it around pretty easily and it makes it a lot easier for hooking up. I talked about at the beginning, these are not the gloves I'm going to, I'm going to show you, but um, we'll get to those here shortly. So anyway, Coyote has a cover on the PTO drive. So we'll get to that first. All right. So after I get the uh, equipment lubed up, moved over into position to go on, then I'm going to take this uh, cover off. Keeps the dirt and debris off when uh when i'm not using the pto so we got that off and i usually will grab a light put it down here because it'll be a little easier to hook up uh, the pto shaft so what i'm going to do now is go ahead and drop down the uh, three-point hitch and kind of get it in position for uh, hooking up to the chipper and i don't usually start the tractor for that i just get it in this spot that i have it just inside the door of the shop and then i'll uh, just take the pto lever and move it down basically i'm going to drop it down uh, just below where those pins are and then i'll be able to lift it up and put it in position all right so here we go with the right side take the pin out first basically i'll take these pins off the arms or out of the arms so that this arm can swing and if I need to, I can also pull these out on the Coyote. Those are adjustable. I shouldn't say adjustable. I should say movable. Um, if I'm able to put it on without doing that, I'll go ahead and do it. Basically, I'm just going to roll it forward, lift it up, put it on, put the pin in. The same on the other side. Okay. There might be some old pros out there that tell me differently about the sequence of this. And maybe there's a science to it that I'm unaware of, but uh, what I typically do next is hook up the PTO shaft. So that way the uh, top link is not in my way and I can line up uh, the teeth just right. So that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so this is a lot of fun when you're uh, trying to record it and do it at the same time, which I haven't done before on this particular piece. Basically, I'm gonna need the top link pin I use to hold the PTO in place while it's in storage. And so I just pulled that pin out. So now you can 
kind of see the chain is dangling down. I orientate myself so I know where uh, and how it's gonna fit on. And then um, the locking pin that you see there, I orientate that to the top because I know there's a tooth right on top, straight forward. And then I'm gonna look at the PTO drive to make sure that it's lined up the way I think it should be as far as uh, going on when I, when I bring it in. So that's the plan, we'll see how it goes. It's not a straight shot, so if it gives me trouble, I will uh, hook up the top link and, okay, so it went on. Now I'm gonna push the button down and slide it forward and it locked. And it never happens that way on camera, but it did today. So it's locked, and then it's just a matter of uh, hooking up this chain uh, so it's in a uh, good safe position. Uh, I always do that right away so I don't forget. And the chain on the back end of this is already hooked up. I'm just gonna roll this the same direction so both the chains are tight. I shouldn't say tight, but just so they're set in position. And then that part's done. Okay, so what's left now is uh, hooking up the top link, so we'll do that. Usually it's pretty close to where it was when I took it off. Sometimes I have to adjust it a little bit, get it where I need it. Stick that through, figure out where I put the pin, that on, we're good to go with that. Need to grab my lights, don't want to forget that I have my light under there, and my PTO cover. I always kind of police the area, make sure I didn't leave anything behind and run over it. Uh, the other, th the next thing I do is, while I'm still in the shop, is I'll go ahead and line up the chipper with the tractor and then uh, reposition my pins for my arms. So we'll do that now. So I don't use any sort of exact science on this, but basically what I'm looking for is to get the, both the shafts straight in line with the back of the tractor. So I'm gonna try to move it over and that looks pretty good to me. So then I'm gonna come over to the side and put that pin in so that these both are kind of locked in position. I mean, a little give I think is fine, but I wanna have it mostly locked in position so that it's not gonna move around. And so I'll go back and check. Sometimes I have those pins in different spots for different attachments. And so I'll go back and see. See, that's probably a little more than I want it to move. So I'll come over and check this one and see if I can reposition this in a little bit tighter spot. Actually, that one's not too bad, but I might push that one. There we go. So that gives it a little less movement and we'll look at it again. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna be adjusting the top link when I get out to where I'm gonna be working because sometimes I want the chipper at a different angle as far as this direction, depending on the ground that I'm on. So, but we'll do that when we get out there. And then don't do like me and forget that you're on the Harbor Freight dolly and make sure you pick up your implement before you drive off. Otherwise you'll drag the dolly with you. Um, so there you have it. It looks like my other chain's not wound up. I'll line that up so they're all wound up the same direction, the way they should be. They're gonna do it on their own, um, but just not to have them hanging down while I'm getting out to where I'm gonna work. So there you go, hooking up the chipper. All right, so check out these gloves. I got these at Couch River Rigging yesterday and learned that they've been making these in the USA since 1910. Uh, they're cotton gloves. I always use leather gloves when I'm out working in the brush and the lumber and the woods and doing stuff. I've never really used these type of gloves before. These are supposed to be the cat's meow. This is what all the loggers use. That's what I'm told. So I'm going to try these out today and let you know what I think. Um, I'm not being sponsored or anything, but um, this is one of the things I learned yesterday when I did my dealership tour. They asked me if I'd ever tried these gloves before. And um, so I'm gonna give them a shot and let you know what I think. Uh, I like the fact that they're made in America. Uh, they are super thick and comfortable, uh, but we're gonna give them a shot out there doing some chipping and see what we think.
Hey guys, more chipping, isn't that fun? <laughs> oh man, I got a lot of chipping to do. I just uh, cleared out a few more of the saplings and different things along the pond shore. Now that the pond's up, I kind of want to see it a little more from the house. So I've been out here taking down the little, little stuff just to uh, clear out the view a little bit. A little chilly this morning, I was in the 30s, so. Um, so I got my layers on and lanceolated pants and whatnot. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you about these gloves that I tried out. Uh, these North Stars are, are pretty darn cool. Um, and uh, I would have never, ever probably tried cotton gloves. Uh, it's actually extra thick and soft on the palm side. And um, they're very, very comfy. Um, and they're actually pretty warm. Obviously, if I was working out in the wet, they're probably going to get wet just like leather gloves. But leather gloves draw a lot of the moisture out of my hands and I get my fingers start cracking and whatnot. So I'm curious to see if if these will do the same thing when it's wet. But it's not wet today, fortunately. And these are definitely warm and cuddly. This is a large size. I probably would have gone with a smaller, maybe a medium. Um, but uh, anyway, check them out. Try them out. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check them out they're super comfy and like i said i'm not getting anything out of them i just wish i had learned about them sooner because they're not very expensive and i want to say like six seven bucks or something like that not very expensive but uh very comfy and uh, easy to use out in the woods and apparently everybody but me is using them maybe so thanks for tuning in and we will talk to you soon